You want to know, is this woman a whore? And if she's a whore, G-Man, where is your proof? Because if you ain't got no proof, G-Man, you're slandering and you're just as bad as everybody else. Now, now. <laughs> Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. It smells like a rotten fish too. And I'm going to prove it. Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. Burnt toes. She is a whore. The former prostitute. So I've been watching her, and I think it's about time this is said. The woman's lying. The woman is not a Christian. There's some rumors going around that she's a former prostitute, and maybe she played around with the idea of Christianity. Hey, 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 Bert, so I know me and you got off on the wrong, on, on the wrong foot and whatnot, but I gotta give you some of that strudel. Mm -hmm. Burnt toast. Mm -hmm. Call me burnt toast. Call me. Little girls like burnt toast who needs to grow up and enter puberty. You know what I mean? What about people like burnt toast, the little girl who needs to grow up? Right, burnt toast? Let me walk your carpet street, burnt toast. Okay? Toast knows she wants some of that people's strudel. She knows it. I'll bake you some later when you give me a call. If burnt toast gets exposed into the ground. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. It smells like rotten fish, too. And I'm going to prove it. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. And I'm going to prove it. So, so anyway, Burnt Toast, I think me and you got off on the wrong foot. I'm going to give you a second chance to prove yourself. All right? She, she, she's a she's a huge, huge whore. Burnt Toast. She is a whore. Burnt Toast. She is a whore. Burnt Toast. She is a whore. And I'm going to prove it. Remember, there's a big difference between a righteous judgment and Satan slandering the saints. I, I, I would never date Burnt Toast. I would never want to conversate with Burnt Toast. I think Burnt Toast is a jerk. I know for a fact that I, I'm really buying into the idea that Burnt Toast is only about maybe 15 or 16 years old. Burnt Toast. Burnt Toast. How is a Christian supposed to behave? I'm just curious. How is a Christian supposed to behave? What's up, guys? Happy day stream. I will probably be lurking because I'm on my way back from work. Well, do your lurking. Uh, hello to all that have to lurk because they're at work. Shh, I won't tell your boss. And hello to everyone who's shopping <laughs> at home with the kids or somewhere else. Um, I hope this will make you laugh. I hope this will make your day go by faster. I was blessed with a day off today. So I'm like, woohoo, let's stream. <laughs> so welcome, AMAC. Welcome to Dumpster Fire. I appreciate that. And welcome, Tazzy, member for four months. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Candy? Okay, guys. So a hmm, couple of things. <laughs> First off, uh, BHB went live this morning. I've not listened to all of it yet. But she, she was basically trying to say that people were running around saying that she was suing Dolly. Okay, this was a classic narcissistic straw man argument. Nobody that I've seen is saying that. <laughs> Nobody. I would like to see a timestamp of when someone said that. Um, I will correct it now in case someone did. I haven't seen it, but... No, no one has said that. I have never said that. This is just Bullhorn Betty trying to distract and deflect from what the lawyer said in his responses to her. <laughs> and she's very upset and throwing a tantrum. And this is what um, this is what people do when they get caught lying. And that's what she did. So it's she's creating straw man and then arguments. And then she's ranting about the thing that no one said. So, and she's hoping that people will go live and review her, which I mean, they will, and that's fine, but I didn't want like, like she's not going to distract me from reviewing the parts that I think should be shown. And it is very, very interesting. 
Nobody isn't saying nothing about the Hobbit getting sued. Yeah, nobody, nobody said that. So I'm not sure. Yeah, like this is typical for her when she's trying to distract people from reviewing something that she doesn't want people to focus on. She will create rumors that no one said and then rant about the rumors. So, okay, you do you, girl. <laughs> Whatever helps you sleep at night. Oh, wait, you're probably not sleeping because you're filing things at three o'clock in the morning. Speaking of, I have an announcement. The PayPal pool for the counterclaim has not only been filled, but was closed because she was able to fill it and get all the money that she needed for the counterclaim. So both the, obviously the, the lawsuit has been closed. The lawsuit PayPal has been closed and the countersuit law, a PayPal pool has been closed as well. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for contributing to that. Whether you gave a dollar, whether you shared it, whether you told somebody about it, I really appreciate it. I donated several times because I really believe in this. And I just want to thank you guys. Um, helping somebody finally get to the point where Bullhorn Betty could potentially, you know, be sanctioned or be in, in trouble so that she doesn't do this to someone else in the future is why I wanted to help. And I gave my word a long time ago when she first started trying to sue Crude AF and some other people, I gave my word back then that if anyone ever decided to not only fight back, but counterclaim her and really stick it to her with a lawyer and did it the right way. And, she, you know, was transparent about everything, whether I knew them, didn't know them, liked them, didn't like them, I was going to help them do that. And so that's what I'm doing. And I'm obviously relieved it's somebody that I actually like. Um, didn't know her very well before all of this, but I'm happy to help and happy to know her. So I just want to let you guys know that. So if you click on the link and it says it doesn't exist, it's because she took it down because she received all the money that the lawyer needs to properly defend her and properly to counterclaim. So that is very, very good news. Betty has deserved this for ages. I agree. I agree because, I mean, here's the thing. If Queen B was running around suing everybody, I would not be helping her right? I wouldn't help anybody who was going around frivolously stop suing people doing the shit that Bullhorn Betty is doing. That's, I'm sorry, you're on your own. I'm not going to help people who do that. But Queen B isn't doing that. And Crude wasn't doing that. And the other people that have been threatened, myself included, we're not doing that. And so for Bullhorn Betty to think that somehow the court system and the police are going to be her personal attack dogs, Mm, that shit don't don't sit right with me. So I'm glad that somebody is able to and willing to fight back. And I'm I'm here for it. Because let me tell you, her lawyer is fantastic. But before we get into the things that I wanted to review today as far as the court documents, I wanted to play a 12-minute clip of Bullhorn Betty in her car traveling with Olivia. <laughs> And it's interesting because this was August 16th. And the reason why I wanted to play this is for a very particular reason. It shows a pattern, not just shows a pattern, but it sets the stage for the protective order that the lawyer bonded to. Because here's the thing. Remember when we were going through all of those court documents and you could clearly see that she was posting these at, it was like 2.48 a.m., 2.50 a.m., 2.51 a.m., 2.53 a.m. She was doing this pretty much at 3 o'clock in the morning. In this clip, she, out of nowhere, probably out of guilty conscience, because nobody was talking about it, nobody was asking her about it, she brings up the fact that she's basically been up since 3 o'clock that morning. Well, guess what? This trip where she's going out of state is four hours after she told a judge in those motions that she was, it was going to be a financial hardship for her to go out of state. <laughs> so again, this is, I think like 
I think they said it was like eight o'clock in the morning or something, her time. And she had turned these things in at like three o'clock in the morning, her time. So that this is just hours after she told a judge that she's scared for her life, needs a protective order, and that she it would be a financial hardship for her, her words, to travel out of state. And here she is on her way to go to Tennessee. They went to Tennessee and then they went to Maryland and then I believe they went to South Carolina and then they were talking about going to New York and then Idaho. Okay, if you can go from Florida to New York or Florida to Idaho, then you can damn sure travel from Florida to Illinois. Just say. And like so many actual lawyers in my chat have said, this is not going to go over well with the judge. I want to check on something real quick. Okay. So, yeah, so this is what she said. I sped her up. You're welcome. And it's very loud. So if you have earbuds, uh, just be cognizant of the fact that there's a lot of background noise and I tried to fix it, but it is what it is. Her streams are always shit. for a few people to get in. Good afternoon, everybody. I wanted you guys to see my smiling face while I'm on the road trip uh, to places unknown. Places unknown. I hope everybody's having a great time. So already right off the bat in the very first, what, 20 seconds, she's already chipping away at her own defense and her own case. If she had a lawyer, the lawyer would have told her, don't travel. And if you do, be damn sure that you don't stream it. Because what she just said in these first 20 seconds is undermining her own motions. Because here she's talking about, oh, she's so happy. You know, everything's great. And she's going to go on a road trip to places unknown, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, you can't file a protective order and also file to do Zoom because you claim that traveling is so expensive for you. And then later in this clip, she talks about how they were having car trouble or the charger was not working and the, the, like the cigarette lighter part of the car was not working. So they weren't able to tr charge their phones. And because of that, she ends up spending a ton of money at a store. <laughs> and I'm like... Betty, this is when you should shut your mouth. This is not going to look good for you. She's showing the judge and lawyer on what a on what a coward she is on not showing up. Well, right. Thank you for your amazing coverage. Thank you for being here. I hope I hope this makes your work day or whatever day you're having go by really fast and puts a smile on your face. So, hey, what's up, Ninny C? What's up, Running Bear? Great day. Let's see if there's something going on in chat. Let's do one chat. There we go. Maybe I can see you guys saying hi. I don't know. But it's nice to see you. We'll wait for a few people. Hey, Laura. It's nice to see you. Good morning. Well, I guess it's good afternoon now, no matter where we are. <laughs> Except if you're in California, then you're just waking up. You're just waking up if you're in California. But <clears throat> we're on the road trip. Hey, B Betty, Kayla. It's nice to see you guys. It's nice to see you. I just figured I'd be coming and just chat just for a little bit. So you guys, I, I know I said I wasn't going to go live today, but since... Olivia was so kind to relieve me from driving duties. I decided I would come live and say hi. Now we know how it is. Just a side note, it's it's weird how she how she speaks sometimes. Like you or I, most people will be like, Yeah, I'm gonna go live. I'm gonna go live. Oh, she went live, right? But she always says, I'm gonna come live. I don't know. I don't know why she says it like that. Is with lives on the road and in motion. Difficulties. Hey guys, hey, hey, hey. We have technical difficulties all over the place. Now I gotta tell you, every road trip, every single stinking road trip that we take this vehicle on, something, happens. something always happens, right? Um, we came back from, from um, Tennessee one time, what was it, a couple years ago? A couple years ago. And the car, because I had just changed out the ignition coils. What's up, down the rabbit hole news? What's up, girl? Um, thank God, not driving. I mean, right? There was one time where she did a stream. I kid you not. She's in the driver's seat driving and she's got her phone, I guess, on the dashboard recording the live. 
and she's got her laptop with the stream open where the comments are in the passenger seat next to her. And I'm like, you are going to end up, you're going to end up killing somebody one day. That's, that cannot be lawful. Miss, I never break the law. And one of the new ignition coils went bad on this trip. And I'm thinking, there's no way it could be the ignition coils. The ignition coils were just changed. We all the way from Tennessee, 12 hours of all the way back to Florida. We thought the car was dead. And I'm just like, at this point, just get us back to Florida. We don't care how we get there. I don't care if this thing goes kaput. When we pull into the driveway, just get it back to Florida. I love how she's <laughs> showing us how scared for her life is in this. <laughs> this is her being scared for her life, by the way. And we got her back to Florida. Well, today, it's all Olivia's fault. She's magnetic. She's electric. Yes. She's electrifying. So she decides to plug in her, her power charger, well, my power charger, in the back power. Well, apparently my power charger must have had a short in it. Uh, it is, you know, over 20 years old. And we, we, look, we go to plug in the phones, the power for everything. And guess what? We had no power. I mean, we have power for the car. We have power to drive. But as far as charging our phones and char you know, having our laptops. and uh, I heard she was tossing out hints for pay piggies to buy her a new car. That does not surprise me. I mean, she's done that in the past. I remember, actually, that reminds me. Back when she was in the middle of trying to sue Crude AF, one of the things that she did when she went live is that she was like, mama needs a new car. And she was like talking about herself thinking that she was going to get like some big financial windfall from him. And then later she wanted to sue, you know, me and like 50 other people. And she thought that she was going to get a new car from suing all these people. Mm, didn't work that way because it was dismissed. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. <laughs> Being able to work, you know, while we're driving down the road, that was all hindered. I pull out the big battery. I, the big battery that I use on my tripods when I'm out in the field and I go live, that big battery, we, I'm like, okay, no big deal. We got the big battery. Just pull the battery out. Let's just stick the stuff in there. I said, at least we'll have some charging going on and, and, and I'll figure it out. Once we get where we're going, I'll figure out what's wrong with this. It can't be anything but a fuse. We just have, we just watched. We had power. This, the ring was blue. We put that thing in and all of a sudden we have nothing. Wonder why Olivia sticks with Betty. Uh, my opinion, because Olivia is just like Betty. She's just a little bit more covert about the behavior. But she clearly endorses and thinks what Betty's behavior is perfectly acceptable. And they, this, this is the fuck that, this is the shit that they're, that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, in my opinion, Olivia is just as bad as the other. She just is a little bit more careful about showing it on camera. Or the cigarette lighters, you know, that's where we plug and get our power for all of our phones and equipment. And I've got two of them in the car. And so we stop. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, it's one, it's one of a few things. It's either both of our tra phone chargers that plug into these cigarette things just miraculously, unintentionally went out at the same time, or we have a fuse issue. I don't have time for these things. So what do we do? We go into Pilot, and we spend like $70 for a testing light, for fuses, for, I mean, while I was trying to check the fuses under the thing. So again, if she had a lawyer, <laughs> the lawyer would have told her not to say any of these things because again, and we're going to get to it, she filed a motion to do all of these hearings via telephonic hearings via Zoom. I'm assuming it's probably going to be Zoom because she claimed it would be a financial hardship for her to travel out of state. Well, here you are traveling multiple states away multiple states away and bragging about how much money you're spending while on the trip. So probably is not going to look good. Oh my, I guess she never won the battle to stop vaping. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she ever stopped vaping. I just think that for whatever reason, she thought that it would benefit her for her channel, I guess. I'm not really sure. Because people vape on camera all the time. So I'm not sure why she suddenly said that she was going to quit. But yeah, I, there's lots of times where she's like, I don't vape anymore. And then she forgets she said it. And like 20 minutes later, she moves her hand into the view of the camera and she's got a vape in her hand. 
So I don't I don't think that she ever even tried to stop. So that's just my opinion. I lose the little fuse holder, you know, that goes into the fuse, the, the fuse cover and actually sticks in there. Well, naturally, as soon as I unhook it, because it was stuck on there and I'm, I'm yanking to try to pull it off and it slips out of my hand and falls into the engine. I can see where it's at. It won't, I, I try to get my screwdriver down there to push it to the ground. So when I back up, I can pick it up and that thing wouldn't budge. It's somewhere under the hood and it ain't going nowhere. Maybe now it has, right? So we buy all this new stuff and we plug it in. Didn't work. So now we're like, okay, it's the fuse. We're looking all over the fuse box under the um, the hood because everything that we're reading all the way here says to look under the hood, the main power uh, fuse box is there. So we stop at pilot, we get all the fuses, we get the fuse. Uh, her supporters were telling her she should quit. Oh, okay, well, see, mm, here's the thing with Bullhorn Betty is that, and I was actually talking to somebody earlier today about this. Bullhorn Betty built her entire channel on drama. And she built it on screaming through a bullhorn, heckling people, and screaming about the haters as she's vaping and or possibly drinking. <laughs> Right. And then all of a sudden she wants to completely change her entire content style, still claiming to be the bullhorn Betty, but then does a bunch of boring true crime stuff. And I say boring because not the cases are boring, but the way that she's presenting them are super boring. No creativity, no real personality of her own, not bringing anything new to covering those cases like so many other channels do and get millions of views doing it. It's just super boring. <laughs> and then she wonders why she doesn't get a whole lot of views. So of course she does a stream this morning where it's a lot of drama and she's ranting about something that nobody said so that she can have something to rant about. <sighs> yeah. And then of course, when you sort of go down that road where you are so desperate for every super chat that shows up, so desperate to e-bag on the internet and grift people out of money and say, I'm going to go to Idaho. I need $1,400. And then people give you money. And then it's like, you aren't doing what you're claiming. Like when she raised money to go to DC to, you know, do something for the children. And then she got busted out. She wasn't actually having private meetings with lawyers and politicians. She was actually going to a political event. And had she just said that, people would have donated for her to go to her political event. But that's not what she did. And so when you get into that, that slippery slope of where you are so desperate to hold on to these people's support financially or their sub or whatever, the second that they start begging you to do something, you're now beholden. You have fallen into that that cycle of being beholden to whatever it is they demand that you do. And it's, you know, myself and many other people, I don't need YouTube to pay my bills. And I don't need YouTube, especially like the way that she does. I don't need YouTube as some kind of validation for my life either. So it, I can agree to disagree with somebody and be perfectly okay with that. And I cultivate that kind of I want to say environment in my chat that we can have civil discourse and it's okay. You don't have to agree with everything about everyone all the time. That's boring anyway. But for her, she has not only cultivated that, but she's also created an environment on her channel where it is a massive echo chamber. So like she was doing yesterday, deleting massive amounts of negative comments. You disagree with her. You push back. Even if you are a supporter she is probably going to delete your comment. And then the few people that she has left that actually do still engage heavily on her channel, when they say something like, you should stop vaping, I hate watching you when you vape, guess what she's going to do? She's going to pretend that she stopped vaping because she desperately wants to hold on to the few people that she has left. Hazel Eyes, uh, welcome to the Dumpster Fire. Thank you so much. Mellow One, member for 24 months. Girl, that's so long. Thank you. I appreciate that. Happy, glorious two years. Well, it's, it's great for you to be here. Uh, we get the fuse uh, tool because I got the mini fuses. We get the, the the tester light, which doesn't work unless it's actually touching the metal. So the guy that told me to go in there and get the testing light didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But $7.99, I'm sure it'll come in handy somewhere. You know, I'm, I have, I'm a homeowner. We can use stuff that, that tests lines to see if they have current rooms. I'm sure I can use it. No big deal. Get out here. We search. We search. I'm looking at the thing. I can't figure out which fuse goes to the stupid lighter. Olivia's on here. Olivia doesn't know 
what she's doing. Poor girl thinking, you know, God bless her. She's trying her best. She doesn't know what that she's doing. Okay. <laughs> One thing I find very interesting is that Olivia sits there and allows Bohr and Betty to talk shit about her like that. I don't know. My my friends in real life or whatever, even friends that I have online, uh, I'm sorry. But if you're going to disparage me and try to humiliate me as some kind of something on a live stream, and it's not like mutual, yeah, we're going to roast each other kind of a scenario. It's her just talking shit. I don't know. I'd feel some type of way about that. I know what the F I'm doing, right? But I know it's got to be a fuse. That, I got enough experience to know that it's a fuse in this yeah. car that needs to be re replaced. We can't find a damn fuse. So finally, at, at stop two, now we've gone several hours. This is our first official stop for gasoline. And I'm like, I'm, I'm getting this damn power problem fixed. It's a fuse. I've got fuses. I've got the fuse thing. I've got the tester. Damn it. The, we're going to be charging. I'm not leaving this, <laughs> this gas station until this car starts charging. Screw it. Olivia thought of a brainiac idea. It was, it was fabulous. Just pull out all the fuses. Start pulling out the fuses and checking them one by one. Right. That's not genius. That's basic common sense, dummy. Like, I cannot. All right. I knew that there was a fuse box in this car, inside this car, actually on the passenger side. But nothing we had read or seen told us to go to the inside. They were all referring us to the outside. So I pop the, the, the one on the inside and I start reading down and there it is. Puts off fit and curvy. I completely agree. She says, puts she puts her down because one, she's a woman, and two, she's young. Two things Betty feels inferior about. Mm, I agree with that. Completely agree with that. There's the fuse I've been looking for. There's the fuse I've been searching. And I pull it out. And it was like, ah! wow, that was that's it's too early for that amount of um. Wow. Okay. I don't know what that was, but okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who said? Let me see. I love how she thinks she's some mechanic. Oh, you don't know, Mr. Rugby? She says that she is a master mechanic, just like she has mastered so many other things, except for the English language. We got the fuse. We got the right fuse. Guess what? We plug the fuse in. I'm charging, baby. I'm charging. That just made my day. And so we were thinking, I said, you know what, Olivia, why did this happen? Like, literally, yeah. we, everything was working when we were in the driveway. Yeah. Literally, by the time we were backed out of the driveway and into my roadway, we had no charging capabilities. Just that quickly, that fuse went out. And so we had been driving four and a half, five yeah, hours, five. five hours. And we finally got power back into where we could charge our stuff. And Olivia, our sweet, dear Olivia, found, found, well, she, she directed me to, to find the fuse, of course, uh, on a YouTube video. From a YouTube video. They make a video. I always tell you guys, you guys got a problem? You need to fix your washer? You need to fix your dryer? You need to fix your dishwasher? They make a YouTube video for that. You want to know who is uh, exploiting families for money? <laughs> they got a YouTube channel for that too. Hmm, I wonder what it is. Save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Do you know I fixed a truck that was going to cost me over two... Watch the math here. <laughs> Her math is so fantastic. $2,000 to fix. Okay, so it was going to cost $2,000 for her to fix a truck. Okay, this is third grade math, by the way. It was. It had a water pump issue. It had a radiator issue. God, it had several issues. I got a tool. How old is Olivia? She is in her uh, early to mid 20s. She is probably a solid 20 years. 18, 15 years younger than Boomer Betty. You know, I was able to pay, I was able to uh, fix that truck, tear the whole front end off, put a radiator in it, put a thermostat in it, put a water pump in it, put a new radiator in it. I was able to do all that for under $500. Okay, so she, it was going to cost $2,000. <laughs> third grade math class, guys. Okay, so the original estimate was $2,000 to fix the truck. She was able to fix it for under 500. So let's just go with 400. Okay. To make it even, she spent 400, right? So class, how much did she save? <laughs> and then listen to how much she says she claimed she spent. $500 and one day of work. I saved myself $2,000. <laughs> so uh, apparently $2,000 subtract $400 equals $2,000. This is probably why she's really bad at, at uh, budgeting her money. <laughs> I 
Right. The math ain't math. <laughs> I cannot, like, I haven't even had coffee yet today. Okay, guys? And my brain even works better than this. <laughs> no wonder. Where are her parents? LOL. Isn't anyone concerned that she's road tripping with these strange middle-aged people? Ah, uh, good egg. You're so cute. So uh, Olivia's mother often accompanies her. And Bullhorn Betty calls her mom. I don't know. Another thing that's kind of weird, but she calls Olivia mom or the mom. And usually the mom is with them, but sometimes the mom does not go with them. And she uses the mom to basically as like a driver. She, the mom drives them everywhere, um, does all this stuff for them, never gets on camera, never like talks or anything. But in the past, she has traveled with Olivia's mom. It's, it's weird. I don't know. It's just my opinion. They make a YouTube for him. And guess what? I just saved myself at least a couple hundred dollars over this fuse because we went to a mechanic. <laughs> now she's saying she only saved a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> I cannot. The mechanic would have charged us to find the fuse. Oh. So then you're not walking out of a mechanic's office with a $60 bill, let's be honest. <laughs> so we fixed our car with a fuse. <laughs> Took us two women an hour and $62 later. But Oh, and you got to have some misogyny in there because, I mean, like, I just live for people with vaginas who run around who are misogynist against other people with vaginas. Okay. All right. With that $62, we have an extra two-port charger for the front and an awesome, amazing converter with a plug, a C port, and a USB. Yeah, they did so swell for being women. <laughs> So we're rocking it out, and we got power. And the reason why I think that happened is because Mom and, and Olivia traveled a lot. She knew absolutely nothing. We just taught her something. Mom's yes. car is going to have a fuse that's blown. Watch. I guarantee in the next... Since Betty and Olivia's last falling out a couple of months ago, her mom hasn't been around. I don't think Olivia's mom is as forgiving of whatever happened between them. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. And that's true because since whatever it is that they had kind of a, a spat... The mom has not been around since. Oh, get your screenshots, folks. That is a beaut. That's a whole ass 45 degree angle. You are welcome. Tony D, member for 13 months. Thank you so much. Woohoo, toast day or day toast. Yes, day stream in the house. Yeah, so you're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Six months and she's going to be able to visit. There's your silver, silver lining. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh no, reconnecting. Hopefully they got all that. All right, guys, sorry, we're, we're having technical issues, which is what happened. Yeah, thank you, because I've had other people uh, send me messages about this, uh, Wisconsinite says you can't find a used radiator, water pump, et cetera, for $500 or less. This whole story is a lie. I can tell because her numbers and info don't add up. Yes, I've actually had several people say that. It would not surprise me at all if she was just saying a story to exaggerate, just to, just to have something to say. Because I've noticed that sometimes she wants so badly to go live and then she goes live and then she doesn't really have much to say. So she just starts making shit up. So it would not surprise me at all if she actually did have someone fix it or she was involved in fixing it. But it was not the numbers that she's claiming. Guys, we're having technical issues. I'm trying to get my other battery, not my battery, but my um, AT&T hotspot going now that we have power. My big battery, went, like we were looking at each other. We're like, oh, that was what freaked me out. Because when your big battery had no power to it, I was like, what is happening? We thought there was a solar flare or something. <laughs> like, we're looking here like, wait a minute. You oh, my, oh, my God. It's so much stupid. So a solar flare. Uh, we're, we're... So let me get this straight. How many billions of people on this planet? Billions with a B. There's a supposed solar flare and you're the only person your car is the only thing on the fucking planet that was negatively affected what girl what why do these people always go to conspiracy theories why because like it things happen you get a flat tire stuff starts where wor stops working things break it's just uh it's called life right so when things break 
my first knee jerk reaction is, oh shit, let me figure out how to fix this. Or if I can't fix it, find somebody who can. The first thing in my mind is not to immediately go to a conspiracy theory and be like, oh my God, it was the aliens. It was solar flare that made my fuse box go out. No, you have an old ass car that you run into the ground because you're constantly traveling. And then you wonder why shit starts breaking. It's because you are not doing regular maintenance one and or it is because you are running the car so much all over the country that things are going to go bad more quickly than a lot quicker than say someone else who's just driving around town going to work. Oh my goodness. This story isn't adding up. Fuses are so cheap and it takes time to switch a thermostat and water pump, especially if it's connected to a belt. Yeah, it does. Yeah, she said that not only was the whole thing under $500, under $500, but it took her only a day to do it by herself. Mm, X for doubt on that. Andra is a used radiator. <laughs> Oh my God, that's funny. Because she thinks the sun and moon shine on her ass. Yes. You're gonna tell me the car's out of battery and our big battery is completely drained. Like we were like, do 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 Like we were feeling like we were in the tri twilight zone for at least four hours today. It's always, it's always a, uh, a trip. <laughs> it's always a trip. Again, this is somebody who claims that she's scared for her life and doesn't want to leave the state of Florida. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I didn't want to stay on here too long. I did want to let you know we're in travels. It's going to start dropping, coming back up, and I don't feel like dealing with it. I don't want to put you guys through that. I just wanted to let you know that we are on our road. We're going out to do some amazing stuff. I hope you guys stick here to the Bullhorn Betty channel. If you have not signed up, oh, thank you, Mad Chatter. God bless you. God bless you. If you have not um, signed up for Chronicles of Olivia, as many of you know, she dropped some a truck radiator is pretty big. It would take a while without power tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, well, she doesn't have a truck. So whose truck was she fixing? Um, so she works on YouTube, but you're going to find her over on TikTok. So if you love Olivia, you love her content, you love seeing the, the amazing work that she does with her videos and her video editing, hit up, hit up the TikTok, go to Chronicles of Olivia. She's got two accounts, the Chronicles, uh, Chronicles of Olivia and Chronicles of Olivia Backup. Don't forget to sign up for both because she's always putting new content up. And for here, if you guys want to see what we're up to, you know it's going to be live streamed right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. So please be here. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. We're not sitting at home. We're going out to help several families. Betty, did you not think this through? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Um, when you didn't think this through, I, I love the fact that this is probably going to be used against you in court. Did you forget that you were in a lawsuit? A lol suit? Because you straight up now, this is proving that you lied to the judge. <laughs> this is not going to go well. Uh, we're covering several different cases, and uh, you guys will be along for the ride. So can't wait and see you back here. I'll probably go live before I go to bed tonight. Where we She didn't. We have more of a substantive live and go over to some cases. Right now, uh, I'm just focused on getting where we're going, uh, getting set up, and uh, getting everything charged. <laughs> Charge Try. your equipment. For those content creators that go out into the field and go out and do work, charge. Charging your stuff all the time and keeping it charged is always your friend because you never know when you need that box charged up, right? I mean, this is... Oh, my God. Wow. Mm. Well, guys, did you know that when you use your phone, you need to make sure that you charge it if you're going on a trip? <gasps> I had no idea. What amazing content that I would have never known on my own. Wow. You learn something new every day, guys. Did you know things that run on power require you to charge them? <laughs> oh, my God. I had no idea. Never know. But we're out here doing some good stuff. GG for life. God bless you. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, you guys, I will see you soon. Um... We'll see you guys real soon. I will I will do one other live before I call it a night. And like I said, we'll have a better live, something set up. But we're here. We're doing what we can. So Speaking of math today, she said, if five people give $1 each, that would be 500 for the family. <laughs> oh, God. I don't. How did this person graduate high school? How? So we'll see you soon. Bye, bye guys. See you bye. Oh, there she is. Bye. Hit the road, Jack. I'm not going to say that. Let's try it again. Hit the road, Jack. I don't know. Don't you have that? Don't you? She has been driving me absolutely insane. She has been driving me. She's been driving me insane with this song. She has been bebopping.
get the road jack, don't you come back. She's been doing it for two days, two days. And then I sit there and say, hey, hit the road jack. She's like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. She's more used to those house phones with the 50 foot cords, LOL. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of cringe. So cringe ahead, folks. Yeah, I've had her up way, way, way early, guys. 5.15. 5.15 in the morning. I got up at 3.30. Wait. Oh, another lie. I just, I just love how she lies about little things like this. Because let me just be very clear. I don't give a fuck when she woke up. Nobody cares. Nobody was talking about it. It's a nothing burger. However, it's very telling because she did not wake up at 3.30 in the morning because guess what we know she did? On those documents, it says the exact time that she submitted all of them. She was up all night long. So she was submitting them at 2.30, 2.48, 2.51, 2.53, so on and so forth. All eight of those things were posted like that. So for her to say that she didn't wake up till 3.30, that's a lie. And I have to say this, in my opinion, in my experience in life so far, when people will lie about little insignificant things that don't matter, mm, that's a red flag. When somebody starts doing that and it's like a lot, it's like, okay, if you're going to lie about little things that nobody cares about, nobody was asking about, that's a red flag that you're probably a whole fucking liar with the rest of your life, an all-nighter, LOL. I mean, yes, she was up all night. And then she woke up Olivia, too, and demanded, I think she woke her up at like 4 o'clock in the morning and demanded that they leave the driveway at 6 a.m. Yikes. That's 3 in the morning. And. Yeah, okay, 3 in the morning. So Olivia was woken up at 3 in the morning. And I told her, because last night I said, I said, we're getting up. We have to be out of the house by 6 a.m. We have to be out of the house 6 a.m. She's like, 6 a.m.? Yeah, we got to be out of the house. I said, that means you need to be able to get up and do whatever you got to do before 6 a.m. What time do you need to be up? She never answered that question. <laughs> but uh, by around 5 o'clock this morning, I, I heard her moving. So I'm like, hey, you know, uh, we're going to be rolling out of here at 6. What time do you need to be up? Uh, uh. Can you imagine having a friend like this? You're dead ass asleep. And she hears you, I guess, turning over on your side or pulling the covers up or readjusting your pillow and in the middle of you sleeping. And she's like, oh, well, she's moving her leg. <laughs> she must be awake. Let me just wake her up in the middle of the night and be like, hey, by the way, I'm going to wake you up again. <laughs> no, I would not put up with that. I wonder if she ever replaced o Oblivious <laughs> tripod she broke. Uh, probably not. You can turn the light on. I'm like, that's what I BHB is exhausting. Yeah. To have somebody like this in real life. Yeah, I can't. I mean, my opinion, she's definitely a narcissist. And like, they just suck the life out of every single room. No wake up warnings allowed. <laughs> right. Right. Like, oh, my God. And then there was a other stream she did the other day where Olivia was staying at her house. <laughs> and. Born Betty is live on a live stream, and I guess she hears a little noise. And it's like, I think it was like 5 30, 6 o'clock her time. And she's screaming, Olivia, get up in the background. I'm like, oh my God. And then uh, you hear some noise, and she's like, yep, Olivia's up now. I'm just like, what the fuck? That's how you treat your friends? No, I would not put up with that. Right at that yeah, moment. But when I say I'm a punctual person, Olivia yeah. can, can attest to I, I'm not. She's not? If you want her somewhere at 10, I you tell her to be there at 9. The Latina, it's the Latina in me. I'm showing up late. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting better at it, working on it. Thank you, Chaptas. I appreciate that. Listening at work, her voice makes me want to jump into one of these holes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad that it's um, making your work day go by faster, I, I guess. Um, thank you so much. 
uh, fell behind, but Betty's radiator story is probably somewhat true, but it's a story from 20 years ago and her dad helped her or something stupid. That would explain the price difference. Yeah, I definitely think that somebody helped her because she didn't do all of that by herself in one day. Mm, I don't I don't believe that. OMG, I just thought of something. The perfect job for her would be a hauler from Harry Potter. Oh, hey, there you go, Betty. Start applications now. She just needs to hang out with me. I'll get her where she needs to be. I'm always 10, 15 minutes early everywhere I need to go. So. You know what she could also do? I have the perfect job for her. Okay. So instead of roosters that are notoriously not on time when they, they sometimes they'll just start screaming in the middle of the night, right? Because they're just so punctual. I think that Betty should be hired as a farm rooster. Stick with me now. Stay with me. Just hear me out. She could get paid to wake up. Well, I'm sorry. She stays up all night long because she doesn't sleep anymore. She could pick, I don't know, five in the morning. And then she could stand on like an, a literal soapbox in the middle of the field with her bullhorn screaming, everybody wake the fuck up. I mean, that would be the perfect job, right? She gets to do what she loves, scream into her flower. And get to tell people what to do. That's fantastic, right? Like, that's her favorite thing. And then she gets paid for it, and it would be an actual job, possibly with benefits, 401k, if she negotiates properly. And then she could spend the rest of her day uh, doing all of this bullshit on YouTube in her little, um, you know, cabin or house or barn or whatever the fuck she ends up living in. I think it would be the perfect set up. And then she could be like, hey guys, I get a W-2 now. What? I'm an adult. Unless I'm with Olivia, then I'm like usually about 15 minutes late. But that's that's good, because usually if she's with mom, she's about an hour late. So exactly. I cut 45 minutes off the tardiness. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm out. I'm officially out. You guys go have a great day. We'll talk soon. God bless. Bye, guys. Okay. So that was the clip I wanted to show. And then we're going to get into the actual documents where she is. This is about five hours prior that she posted all that stuff. And then this is the lawyer's response to that. And wow. And notice how the lawyer was actually posting things in the afternoon during a work day. <laughs> no, it's so crazy. He is so crazy to post things. While the sun is still up. Fantastic. She gets off her soapbox at 4.59 and gets on her high horse to cackle the town awake. That is the perfect second job. I am so happy for her. She should totally do that. I fully endorse that kind of behavior. Fully endorse it. It's amazing to be that the two fake blonde bimbos two years ago were teaching Olivia how to grow a channel. MGL, no channel. BHB, less than 40K. And the student 200K plus LMAO. Yep. Interesting how things work out, huh? <laughs> Giddy up. <laughs> She's the town crier. <gasps> that would be another. That could be her career path. The town crier career path. I'm I'm sure that there is some sort of AA degree at that um, college that she went to. Pretty sure that that exists. So <laughs> this is her motion to uh okay so this is the lawyer's response to betty talking about the protective order okay a town jester mm, she's not funny unless you were laughing at her and then that would totally be an option for her we'll have to see if she qualifies for that but this is where the lawyer responded to her motion for protective order and this is fantastic so um, the lawyer goes, the lawyer basically says, uh, Queen B through counsel at lawyer responds to BHB's motion for protective order motion as follows. And so this was so fantastic. I love her lawyer so much. The way that he throws shade, legal shade, <laughs> I, I just can't get enough of it. Thank you as story to tell. Welcome to the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. Did I say that right? A story to tell. Sorry about that. My uncle is a town crier. He doesn't get paid, but that's in England. Ah, well, maybe. Maybe she can do the whole like rooster thing on a farm. That would be great. 
<laughs> so it says introduction, the motion requires a single question to be answered. Can a party in a lawsuit use a motion rather than appropriate procedural process process to secure a protective order for unspecified relief by reviewing by removing a statement from context and claiming fear from the same? Mm, great question. I just imagine Bullhorn Betty drinking her boxed wine. No shade, but she was drinking boxed wine while reading this and getting more and more and more angry. Love that. Sign her with fire. Member for five months. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cluck around and find out. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Cluck around and find out. Um, of course not. The motion, along with the other filings made by BHB at the same time, are nothing more than tactics to stall and run up fees against BHB's sued Queen Bee. And when Queen Bee had the gall to defend herself, BHB changed tactics, seeking a protective order as she has against others in the past, which is true. I mean, she tried to do that with Prudy F. And it was thrown out. If she ran in a hen house, the hens would run out. Yes, but people would be punctual when they woke up in the morning. <laughs> you got to look on the bright side. <laughs> um, it says, uh, da -da -da -da. okay, resolution of this motion can be simply, it is procedurally improper and the allegations of the motion are insufficient. But if the court does not deny the motion out of hand, then Queen B requires an evidentiary hearing in which BHB can be cross-examined in person. Ooh, Betty, you didn't you didn't think this through, huh? Wow. Yes, this is so if you have not caught what the lawyer just threw down, <laughs> essentially, uh, BHB has fucked herself legally. Um, yes, just legally. Um, <laughs> because she filed a motion, a, a protective order, protective orders require an evidentiary hearing. And so now she's got to choose. Well, actually it's not her choice. The lawyer is going to choose one of two options. The lawyer is either going to throw the protective order out on its face because it has no merit. And it was simply used to harass financially drain and silence her critics which is exactly what Queen Bee is counter-assuming her for, by the way. Or the judge keeps it in place and forces Bullhorn Betty to show up in person. Mmm. Yes. I love when people take their shoe and shove it all the way down their throat. Love it. Let's go, Brandon. Thank you so much. Olivia's mom watches the BHB domain while traveling. Oh, interesting. Mm. It's happening, guys, and I'm here for, oh, oh, yes, it's definitely happening. And she's not going to be able to get out of this. Like, the judge is going to rule, and it's either way, it's not going to go well for her. So it's kind of like which which way is the judge going to rule? Because either way, it's, it's not going to be good for her case. Chap test, thank you so much. I know I am behind a little bit, but we have tornadoes here. Maybe she could be the tornado siren. <gasps> that is an excellent, excellent idea. I I am here for it. I officially endorse her to be a tornado siren. I think she'd be perfect for that. Perfect. Um, it says here, relevant factual and procedural history. BHB sued Queen B in June. June 13th, 2023, after being served, Queen Bee hired undersigned, meaning the lawyer. Undersigned, the lawyer, promptly sent BHB a letter explaining the lack of factual and legal merit in her complaint. BHB took great offense to the same, called undersigned unprofessional for his advocacy, and threatened disciplinary proceedings. That is also going to piss the, <laughs> the judge off because that's ridiculous. You know, a lawyer reaches out to you to communicate, which is what you're supposed to do in a lawsuit. Even I know that. And I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a paralegal. And even I know that when you're in a lawsuit, the idea is to get the two lawyers to communicate in a way where it's not um, a lot of animosity between the two. And so she starts off with threatening him. 
and then saying, please don't communicate with me. So uh, that's not going to go over well. And it says exhibit A, and we're going to get to that at the end. It says notably BHB, not Queen B, um, filed the firm, but reasonably letter among with her uncivil emails in response. It is notable because the letter provided her the opportunity to dismiss the case before it escalated, and she outs herself as someone who threatens disciplinary proceedings to gain an advantage in a civil proceeding. Ouch, Betty. Mm, dagger to the heart. Brahana, thank you so much. There's nothing she's done or said that's going to go her way. I agree. She has to know that. I mean, she's not blind or six years old. She does have a brain. Yes, but don't underestimate the power of stupidity and pride. So that's probably what her blinders are made of at this point. She still is trying to convince herself and others that this is going to go well for her. It's not looking good. It's just not. Were she an attorney, she would be violating Illinois rule of professional conduct. Mm. After BHB made her intention to proceed clear, Queen B began her defense of the case. She prepared and filed a notice of demand for bill of particulars because the complaint was in disarray. <laughs> I love to use that word. At the same time, Queen B filed her counterclaims against BHB. She has since served discovery on BHB, the subject of a to-be-filed motion to compel. Ooh, that a motion to compel. I can't wait for that. On August 15th, 2023, BHB filed a flurry of documents. She moved to strike the notice and demand for the bill of particulars, moved to appear te telephonically, moved to dismiss the counterclaim, issued a request for production, and filed the motion being responded to. The same day undersigned, meaning the lawyer, explained that the bar on discussing with her would make the litigation process harder, meaning she had already told him, don't communicate. She actually said, I demand that you not communicate with me until we are standing in front of a judge. Well, here she is. She filed eight different things and then the judge is now going to want to know why the two sides aren't having a conversation back and forth like they would normally would in a lawsuit. And this is him explaining once again, hey, judge, we can't even communicate because she has barred me from discussing and making this process harder. Thank you, Pugs. Welcome to the dumpster fire. Uh, Pro Charlotte, wel welcome. Member seven months. Thank you. I appreciate that. BHB pride rules for thee, not for me. She believes she is special and different somehow. I agree with that. She does seem to have a massive amount of entitlement. And it's like, girl, you are just like everybody else. Okay? You are not special. <laughs> okay? She says, um, oh, he says, her response was to state she would only discuss if Queen B stipulated to relief sought by BHB some the mask of BHB's feigned insult was removed. She is holding in, um, she is holding efficient administration of justice hostage to Queen B, simply calculating, uh, capitulating to her demands. So essentially what that means is, and I, wow, this is pretty telling. What the lawyer is essentially saying here, what he is saying actually is this, that BHB was doing the same thing in a court of law that she tried to do to me, to YouTube. And it was basically to hold the court hostage and a little bit of extortion because what she's saying here <clears throat> is that, hey, yeah, we can communicate if she drops her countersuit, gives me money, and lets me win everything. And so the lawyer's like, <laughs> um, okay, that's not going to happen. I guess we're not going to communicate. Imagine the balls that you have to have to go into a case that you are probably not going to win and say that to your opposing counsel. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot. Um, aging bag lady, welcome to the dumpster fire. Appreciate that. The judge is not a principal at the junior high school. That is correct. And she will, she will find out. That's all I got to say. And then the footnote here says this procedural me mechanicism was meant to save the courts and parties time 
Motion would have been appropriate, but would result in iterative rounds of pleading through a bill of particulars. BHB could have been clearer in a single document, keeping a clean docket. So right again, he's making another really great point is that if she had just done the bill of particulars, none of this would have happened. She would have done her bill of particulars. <clears throat> they would be going into their first hearing in September, which is coming up quick, folks. It's only what, maybe five weeks away, uh, four weeks away. Actually, yeah, it's about four weeks and three days away. So they could have gone into that hearing with a cleaner docket without all of this bullshit that now the judge has to rule on before they can even get to another hearing in December. I mean, it's crazy. But it said she chose to file eight things. It says, um, let me finish the sentence. She is holding, if, okay, I already said that. The ways and means by which BHB is prosecuting this matter go to prove the allegations of the counterclaim true, which is the point that I made earlier. She is doing the very thing that Queen B is alleging in her counterclaim. <laughs> Tell me you're litigious without telling me you're litigious. It says this response to the motion for protective order follows. Argument. Okay, this is where he gets in and he just decimates her paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. Argument. BHB takes offense to certain statements made by Queen B and asserts Queen B wishes to make a circus of these proceedings. Motion for protective order against Queen B, August 15th, 2023. She states she hears Queen B would slash will assault BHB. And for that reason, she seeks relief of a protect order of protection with unspecified bounds based on the filing Queen B understands and the request not to be a not to be a request for a rule, but a stalking no contact order. BHB supplies no authority showing entitlement to entry of any protective order, let, in, let alone an SNCO for that reason alone, the motion should be denied. And an SNCO um, is, there's a little footnote here. And I love that he did footnotes. It's way, it's a lot more cleaner in the document. He says, Illinois law provides for orders or protections for cases of domestic abuse where the victim has a known relationship with the abuser. A civil no contact order for cases of SA where there is no relationship with the abuser and a firearm restraining order for crisis situations where someone seeks court assistance because a household or family member might cause harm. None of those seem to apply to the claims of the motion. As such, that leaves only an SNCO. Yikes, Betty, you have, you have shoved yourself all the way into that corner. This is great. He goes on to say, <clears throat> the lack of authority is likely due to the fact no authority allows the relief BHB appears to seek. <laughs> I bet you BHB read that and has no idea how much of an insult that is. <laughs> the Okay, so the SNCO basically is an acronym for the Stalking No Contact Order Act. So that's what that means. So he says the Stalking No Contact Order Act um, Act provides a remedy to cause offenders to, to stay away from them or certain third parties. To secure such an order, there must be a course of conduct where a respondent follows, monitors, observes, surveils, or threatens a person. The first two reasons the motion might fail, must fail, are procedural. Otherwise, an evidentiary hearing, BHB, will be unable to meet her burden. So if you haven't caught that, an evidentiary hearing is one of those exceptions to the rule. So um, she wants a Zoom call, but here she's asking for a protective order. You cannot have both of those at the same time. That's impossible. And Bullhorn Betty is too stupid and too uneducated to understand this. Again, this is somebody who claims they are an expert in the law that they uh, studied the law, that they have an AA in paralegal studies and that they used to work for a judge and blah, 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 blah. I don't believe her. X for doubt, major, major doubt. Because the one thing 
that a protective order requires is for you to do an evidentiary hearing in person. So you can't do that and then also beg the judge to only do Zoom calls. Pick a lane, girl. Pick a lane. It says, first, the motion fails as it is procedurally improper. In action for SNCO requires an independent petition or a disciplinary petition. No such filings was made here. Second, the act requires a specific form of summons to be issued and served. No such summons was served. Third, an SNCO can only use issue if stalking occurs. Do you hear that, Betty? People watching your shitty ass content on YouTube does not equate to stalking. I have told you this. Queen Bee has told you this. A thousand other content creators and subscribers have told you this. Just because you think it's true does not mean it's true. This is a lawyer telling you it's bullshit. Okay. He goes on to say, uh, based on the motion, BHB will be unable to meet her burden of showing stalking under the act at this at the hearing. And to that end, if the court is disinclined to deny the motion out of hand, BHB requests an evidentiary hearing where BHB must meet her burden of proof as provided for in the act. The right to cross-examine Miss Bullhorn Betty in person is of utmost importance given her past behavior as shown by media coverage and her own videos. Mm. It's almost like people are using your own lies and bullshit on your channel against you. Wow. This is fantastic. Is a judge reading these documents yet? Uh, Yes. A judge has been signed. His name is on the docket. And every time she turns this in, every time the opposing counsel turns this in, the judge, it gets sent to the judge for him to review. Yep. So he sees all of this. Her emails, everything. Because she decided to put all that stuff in a document. Way to go, dummy. Finally, BHB was advised of the need to secure counsel. See motion to strike. Queen B and demand for a bill of particulars, Exhibit A, BHB was admonished. BHB has admonished Queen B to get counsel. BHB knows knowledge of the law is necessary. She pointed to a vast knowledge of the law. Mm, it's like your words are coming back to haunt you. Oh, I love this. Delicious. Yet BHB's filings is completely inappropriate. Hmm. This is what the Illinois Supreme Court rule states, okay? The signature of party constitutes a certificate by him that he has read the pleading, motion, or other document that, to the best of his knowledge, information, and belief, formed after reasonable inquiry and is well-grounded in fact and is warranted by existing law or a good faith argument for the extension, modification, or reversal of existing law, and that it, that it is not interposed for any improper purpose, such as to harass or to cause unnecessary delay or needless increase in the cost of litigation. Mm, yikes, girl. It's almost like you and your gaggle of idiots that told you this was a correct way to go was either trolling you or they're just as dumb as you are. <laughs> Andrew Lee Riches. I mean, pretty much. Goes on to say, BHB is proceeding pro se, but that does not excuse her from the rules. Oh, no, Betty. Oh, no. You've got to follow the rules that everybody else has to follow. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to melt. BHB is weaponizing grave laws like the act to silence her critics. In the past, she filed for a restraining order against another critic in the blank South Carolina summary court. Oh, no, Betty. Not the crude AF case coming back to haunt you. Oh, no. <laughs> By the way. Crudy F is 
thoroughly enjoying this. I just want to let you know that. He is over the moon happy about this. So, yes, uh, what the fuck you did to Crude is definitely now being used against you in court. Love that for you, sweetie. Now, when she is being put to her proofs on her frivolous suit, is attempting to run up Queen Bee's legal fees with more frivolous filings. Oof. Oh, my God. This is great. <laughs> I love this lawyer. Here, Bullhorn Betty identified no law she was proceeding under, and the only one that might fit had its requirements flouted. Undersigned, the lawyer, will promptly provide an affidavit of attorney's fees and costs for the court's consideration should it find Rule 137 was violated. Wow, Betty, so in the bullshit that you filed, where you said that Queen B didn't have any lawyer fees to pay, hmm, yikes. I mean, it was pretty common sense to me and pretty much everybody else that lawyers don't work on sandwiches or good wishes, right? They actually get paid per hour and it's extremely expensive. But you decided to lie in your report and or your filing and claim that she actually didn't have lawyer fees to pay. And the lawyer's like, okay, then I will provide an affidavit of all the fees and costs that Queen Bee is having to pay me per hour to deal with all of these extra frivolous filings. Yikes. Wow. Okay. Conclusion. For these reasons, the court can deny the motion out of hand. Otherwise, Queen Bee seeks an evidentiary hearing where BHB can be cross-examined. That means in person, Betty. With your ass in the seat being deposed. Ugh, love it. And put to proof of her claims to be met the standards required by the act. Wherefore, Queen Bee asks this court to deny the motion find BHB violated Supreme Court Rule 137 and order a fee and cost affidavit be filed ruling on the papers as to the amount of any sanction. I love the word sanction. I'm so glad that that's now being brought up, girl. And provide any other relief it deems appropriate. Mm. I think that, I think I know why she's staying up at night. <laughs> I think that she's like, seeing the word sanction float over a gate, just like sheep do when you're trying to go to sleep. It's just sanction, sanction, sanction <laughs> as she's trying to go to sleep. Wow. Girl, no wonder you can't sleep. I get it now. Wow. Okay. I would be scared too. And this just says that it was, you know, the lawyer sent it to everyone. And uh, <laughs> so then we're going to look at the other thing that he responded to, which is her claiming that she should do Zoom. And this is connected to the one that we just read through because he references back and forth between those two documents. And they're very much related to the clip that we played earlier in the stream as well, where she's claiming that she doesn't travel because she doesn't have any money to travel. And then she travels and then brags about the money She's been traveling, but you know, <laughs> I'm glad Crude is watching all of this from the bushes laughing after what she did to him. He deserves a front row seat to Betty's karma. 100% deets completely agree. I am so happy for him and everyone else that has had to deal with her bullshit. Yes. They know with fire one sanction, two sanction, three sanction. She should do that to help her go to sleep at night. So this is objection to requests for telephonic virtual hearings. Um, I, I'm assuming they mean Zoom. Okay. So again, he filed this in a work day. <laughs> What's that? And so here uh, he says, uh, basically introdu introduction that he's representing Queen B and that uh, Bullhorn Betty requested for telephonic virtual hearings. And he says, introduction. Now this, this right here is a mute. He, it's more shade. It's so delicious. Introduction. BHB's sole basis to avoid appearing at this court where she sued Queen B is cost. Ooh. So in the very first sentence, it's like, ugh, another jab. The request should be denied. 
In major part, it should be denied because it would deny Queen Bee the right to cross-examine Bullhorn Betty at an evidentiary hearing at BHB's motion for protective order, which is what we just went over. So this is why I did these in this order. Relevant factual and procedural history. Mm, and it gets better. Bullhorn Betty sued Queen Bee, June 13, 2023. Her complaint alleges that she suffered business losses due to Queen Bee's critical commentary about her. BHB obtains revenue by providing commentary and, <laughs> this is my, my favorite part, and so-called reporting on tragedies. Oh boy, <laughs> I see why she can't sleep now. Thus, this is a business dispute, at least in part, which he's got a point. She can't have it both ways, right? She can't say, I'm going to sue this person for attacking and ruining and damaging my brand and my business and my media company and fill in the blank bullshit, whatever. And then also say, oh, but I need to be treated like a private citizen. You cannot have it both ways. Okay. So BHB will continue to do this to people she doesn't like. Yeah. Until the judge sanctions her and then she won't be able to do it very much, if ever again. This is the first time that I'm aware of that she's actually having to deal with the consequences of her actions in using the court as a weapon like this. And I hope it is the last time. Why does she do, why does she go to those pokes just to harass them? She has never uh, recovered anyone. Missing people will print flyers as well as the Adam Walsh Resource Center. Some companies will print them for zero. I, I agree. Uh, I think that she just wants to make herself seem more important than she is. The sad thing is that it's very hard for a lawsuit to be considered frivolous. Um... It depends because in this case, I have confidence that the judge will see it as frivolous. The last lawsuit was dismissed because it was frivolous and it had no merit, no evidence. And this is now, and then there was another one that she admitted to. So this is my knowledge that this is the third time that she's done this. Hopefully, yes, I can, I hopefully hope that the judge sees it that way too. So she goes on, uh, he goes on to say, once Queen Bee defended herself, filing counterclaims and seeking a bill of particulars, BHB lashed out. She filed a motion for a protective order, which necessitates an evidentiary hearing. Betty, did you, did you read that part? She moved to dismiss the counterclaims and in part escalating her vitual, vitual, <laughs> oh my God, can y'all tell I've not had coffee today? against undersigned as well as Queen Bee. Bullhorn Betty filed a meritless motion to strike Queen Bee's notice and demand for a bill of particulars. So yeah. In sum, BHB filed a lawsuit here in Knox County, Illinois over a business dispute and has created the need not only for hearings, but evidentiary hearings. That's true. I mean, most of her lawsuit seem to be about a business dispute. She's mad that somebody has defamed her business, her brand, her company. So yes, it that's exactly what it is. Governing law. The Ninth Court Administrative Order governs BHB's request. It amended the Ninth Judicial Court Court Rules, Local Rules, Local Rule 1.80 was amended to provide the court with discretion to allow remote hearings to address, among other things, cost or time savings. Local Rules, Part 180, nothing in the rule mandates remote proceedings and the court may require in-person hearings. If the court determines the nature of the hearing, the conduct of the parties or attorneys in the case, or the need to allow parties and their attorneys to communicate and negotiate effectively, requires it. Evidentiary hearings cannot be held remotely. So again, she decided to file a protective order. There was actually two different PDF files that were about the protective order on the docket. It requires an evidentiary hearing. So don't forget now BHB is blaming me for spreading those documents around, not realizing BHB is the true crime community and people know how to ask for court documents. I mean, right. Right. Like it is, and she knows this, like she's just, 
she's just being dishonest. How many times does she go live where she went on to a docket and clicked a link for like the Brian Kohlberger case or whatever, and even screen shared her screen showing how she went to some online website to download court documents. She knows exactly what the fuck this is. So for her now to pretend like that she just has no idea how people are getting these documents, a uh, girl, it's called public record. You go there, you purchase it, and you download the PDF file just like she does every day for her streams. No coffee is not the reason you said bitch you all. <laughs> well, I mean, Florian slip, and I stand by that. Bitch you all. That's what I'm saying from now on. Arguments. The entirety of the reason for participating remotely is set forth in a single sentence. BHB resides, reside in blank Florida, and traveling to hearings would create a financial hardship. Those are her exact words. Traveling to hearings would create a financial hardship. This court cannot grant the request as to hearing on the motion for a protective order. All, um, and as for the hearing on the remaining motions, the court should exercise its discretion to deny the request. So again, he's saying that they can't even address the protective order that she filed if she's going to be doing Zoom calls. Because again, to remedy the protective order, if the judge doesn't throw it out on its face because it's completely meritless, if the judge does not throw it out, then you have to do evidentiary hearings with a protective order because you have to give the opposing counsel the right to cross-examine the person who's accusing. And then the accused has the right to respond to their accuser. I mean, everybody gets those same rights. First, BHB seeks a protective order which requires an evidentiary hearing. Which is what I just said. Queen B intends to cross-examine Bullhorn Betty and establish Bullhorn Betty is not entitled to a stalking no-contact order. Mm. Is that what you're scared for? Are you scared that Queen B intends to cross-examine you? Mm. Oof. I would love to be a fly on that wall. Oh, my God. Evidentiary hearings are exempted from remote hearings. You should have done your homework, Betty, before you decided to pull that card. But I love that you did because you're such an expert. Local rules, part 1.80, in any event, given the nature of the hearing, this court has the discretion to deny the request based on the nature of the hearing, requir requiring appropriate cross-examination. BHB's public persona, correspondence, and filings indicate a, combat, a combative individual with a degree of legal skills. So that is going to be your downfall as well, Bullhorn Betty, is that you have spent, I don't even know how many years online bragging about how you have so much legal skills and knowledge and ability and expertise. And then when you do that and you go into a lawsuit pro se, there is a chance, there is a potential chance that the judge will not give you as much leeway as someone who says, I don't know what I'm doing, but I can't afford a lawyer. That's completely different than what you have been claiming. An in-person cross-examination is necessary for, for Queen Bee to protect her procedural due process rights, especially in a case involving SNCO. Right. So if you're going to accuse someone of stalking and harassment, like actual stalking, not somebody saying something that hurts your fifis on the internet, but actual stalking, you now have given the right, that other person now has the right to confront you. Just like if somebody were to accuse Bullhorn Betty of stalking and sue her for it, she would have to, uh, she would have the ability and the right to ask for cross-examination as well. Second, it makes little sense for the court to require an in-person hearing for one motion, then others are stacked at the same, same time. Evidence, um, efficiency dictates simply hearing all motions at once, which is also going to be a mark in, in the checkbox with the lawyers on the lawyer side because he does make an excellent point. 
Judges don't like their time wasted. They're extremely busy. And if they can do something more efficiently, they're going to choose that over something that you prefer. So the fact that all of these things combined together is stacking more and more on Queen B's side as far as how the judge is going to see whether or not she should be able to do Zoom calls. Because that's right. The judge is not going to put up with somebody who files all these crazy motions frivolously where they have to be done in person. And then he's going to have to wait and make a yet another court date to do all the other ones that she demands to do in Zoom. Well, if you're already going there in person, why not just take care of all of it in one day or in one whatever couple of hours that they're there? It doesn't make sense to make a second court date. But again, we'll see what the judge says because ultimately it's up to him. Third, BHB refuses to speak with undersigned counsel. Exhibit one, which we're going to get to. While she has said she will, if Queen B caves to BHB demands, which would require BH, uh, Queen B to, to stipulate to a violation of local rules. The current status is that BHB will only speak to undersigned in filings or at court, which is yet another thing that's going to stack on Queen B's side. Bohorn Betty can't say to the other, the opposing counsel, hey, I'm not going to talk to you unless we're in front of a judge. And then later be like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't actually want to do that. I want to do Zoom the entire time. That doesn't, <laughs> that's not going to work. And it's yet another tick on Queen B's side that it's making me think more and more of the judge is going to rule in the lawyer's favor. But also for this it shows it's yet another example of how Bullhorn Betty is like, yeah, okay, I'll communicate with you if you cave to all of my demands. Betty, do you think the judge is going to look at that favorably? That you are using his court to hold someone hostage legally? Girl, this is... This is not good. <laughs> this is great for us. I mean, this is hilarious, but wow, that is, you You got some balls. I give you that. You got balls. But at one point, I thought you were smarter than Shani for Christ. I take that back. It says here, the court, let me go back, da, 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 says, but now she has not wanting to, but now she does not want to attend proceedings. The court should exercise its discretion to facilitate the communication and any potential neg negotiations between undersigned and Bullhorn Betty, right? So the judge is always going to err on the side of wanting the opposing counsels to communicate and work it out so that when they actually do stand before the judge, most of it has been worked out or agreed to or some agreement or plea or something has happened, the judge favors that behavior versus someone saying, well, huh, I'm going to sue the fuck out of someone just to harass them and financially drain them and to silence them and try to take their First Amendment right away. But I don't want to talk to the opposing counsel. The judge doesn't like things like that. Judges, they just don't. That's just not the point of court. Fourth, the basis for the request simply appears to be disingenuous. This is a business dispute by Bullhorn Betty. She chose to file suit here, and now she wants to avoid, quote, financial hardship by not visiting Illinois. Just days before filing her request, BHB explained she was, as part of what constitutes her business, visiting Idaho, potentially South Carolina or New York, and leaving the following week for a surprise, undisclosed location. Exhibit three. Ah. And this, the stream that I just played earlier is going to be yet another exhibit and yet another court document because she is doing things that are undermining her own lawsuit. So BHB can and does travel for business throughout the country. She can certainly travel to Illinois for her business suit. <sighs> Mic drop. Conclusion, BHB's request should be denied. It is simply not allowed for one of the pending motions, and the others are noticed up for the same time. Even if that were not the case, the court should exercise its discretion to require in-person hearings at least for the pending motions.
Mm-mm-mm. And this is where we get, this is showing that they were all served, okay? And this is where we get into the exhibits. And um, she has fucked herself because these exhibits are pretty damning. Like, you, these are her words. These are her words. Exhibit one. Um, and this is from Bullhorn Betty to the lawyer. Bullhorn Betty says, your professionalism is disgusting. The same um, email that we <laughs> that I made a video out of that we have read in the past. She goes on for those that didn't watch that. Your professionalism is disgusting. My concern would not be a lawsuit filed against you, but rather your complaint. I am almost certain you compare my channel and what I've said to your client. My case is in good standing. Love the incomplete sentences. Love that for you, boo. I, I understand the elements. I've expressed the elements in my complaint and provided the evidence to support those proper and legitimate claims. If you were going to write me to continue to harass me on her behalf, you've got a big problem. And I'd be more concerned about other more formal repercussions than I would be a lawsuit from me. If y'all can understand the utter drunk gibberish this is, um, more power to you. She goes on to say, I am un sure what your client has told you about me, but I will not allow you to continue her harassment upon me through emails because you're her attorney. Furthermore, if this level of harassment continues from your office, I will be filing your demand letter in the court for the judge to take judicial notice of. Hint, the threatening part, right? Then she goes on to say, now, if you would like to speak to me and address me with some professionalism, I am happy to work with you in this matter as I am opposing counsel by way of me representing myself. Again, I have stated legitimate claims and I have met the elements of those claims. And, and this is the part that she lied about to the judge, quote, and since it appears that you do not wish to work with me, I'm going to demand that you discommunicate, discontinue communication with me until we are before the judge to discuss this very matter. Betty, you said that you did not want to talk to him unless you were physically standing in front of a judge. You can't later go back and be like, oh, yeah, I just, I want to do a Zoom call now because I'm scared of Queen Bee's lawyer. That doesn't work. Yep. And she's like, respectfully yours, born Betty. And then this is the lawyer's response. Bullhorn Betty, I received your email. While I disagree with your conclusions, we note your intention to persist and will proceed accordingly. As for my letter and to prevent a misunderstanding causing you to file another suit, please note that under Illinois law, defamation requires publication to a third party, even if the letter's contents were untrue and were not subject to the litigation privilege, then it still was sent only to you. Thus, there is no basis for your claim. <laughs> this, folks, is how you handle a Karen. I love this shit. Judge would prefer attempted mediation to come to some kind of agreement before the case goes to court. I completely agree. And when they stand before the judge, the judge is going to ask, why wasn't there more of an attempt to mediate this instead of filing fucking eight different motions in, in one day in the middle of the night? And this is what the judge is going to see. He's going to be like, oh, so the lawyer did reach out to you and did want to work something out and you told him to go fuck himself. Okay. Okay. Got it. And what I'm hoping is that the judge will then say, um, yeah, Zoom calls, no Zoomy calls. Okay. No Zoomies. I don't watch BHB except through Burnt Toast and a few others. I can't stub her, her ignorance. I've heard a lot of people say that and I appreciate you being here. Hey, what's up, daddy's baby girl? Hope Queen sues for all lawyer fees. Oh, oh, Queen's counterclaim, um, is suing to make her whole. So it's suing for any court costs and legal fees that she's had to, to pay. So yes, that that's already happening and she cannot get out of that by the way. So then, uh, Bullhorn Betty emails him back. Dear lawyer, dear Mr. Lawyer. First, I found your demand letter very insulting and lacking in great facts. Second, I found it hard to believe any attorney would initially try to intimidate me through a demand letter. This 
Benny, okay, the judge is going to see this as you being antagonistic and unreasonable and inappropriate and a Karen, by the way. A lawyer, an opposing counsel, emailing you one time, giving you great advice by telling you to seek counsel and wanting to have an open dialogue with you to see if something can happen, right? Something, some compromise of some sort. But no, this is what you, this is how you respond to him. You say that he's harassing you with a fucking email. This again, Betty, only proves Queen Bee's counterclaim even more right. Because in her counterclaim, she's claiming that you acclaim everybody is harassing you just by an email or watching your YouTube videos. And here you go. You're proving her right, dummy. I think BHB is digging herself deeper and deeper. I completely agree. Completely agree, 100%. And it, the crazy thing, B Tim, is that she's so dumb. There's so many things that she doesn't even realize that she doesn't realize. Like, I think that she kind of understands how bad this is going to go for her, especially if she continues with this behavior and continues streaming like she did this morning, talking about this again. But I think that eventually she is going to figure it out. I think that it's going to be like when the judge renders his verdict and she's going to be like, oh, shit, what happened? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean I lost? BHB suckered some naive people out of money while traveling. She is determined to do trips, hoping they work like they did before. She saw her motives. She's uh, before people saw her motives, incompetence, hypocrisy, and nastiness. Yes, I completely agree. Yeah, I think that's the only reason why she's traveling is because when she travels and goes live traveling, even though she's talking about basically nothing, she does get more views. And she does get more super chats and things like that when she travels because she built her entire brand on being what? Bullhorn Betty. So it doesn't make sense to me why she, I said this earlier, I think, where it's like her whole entire brand is drama, heckling people through a bullhorn and screaming about the haters. So of course, the subscribers that she initially gained through that, that's what they're looking for. Whether they are a fan or somebody who is hate watching her, that was her initial audience. So then when she started doing like really, really boring true crime stuff, that's why her views dropped off. And notice every time she travels or does these drama streams where she's screaming about the haters, I'm going to sue this person, I'm going to dox this person, blah, 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 blah. She gets more views because it's the Karen behavior that people subscribe to her channel to begin with. And it's like, and I think that she hates the fact that she can't do true crime and get those same numbers because she is, I, I definitely see that there's some kind of like internal fighting going on in her head about that whole situation. Thank you, B. Tim. I appreciate that. Don't forget that Heels was put on the lawsuit to dox her. Completely agree. And BHB later stated the court had no jurisdiction to add her. That's correct. That sounds like an abusive process to me. Um, completely agree. Yet another example of how she was harassing and doxing somebody and trying to add someone to a lawsuit just to harass them and, and dox them for the purposes of what, right? So that is that in itself, she's incriminating herself for abusive process. And she doesn't even realize that. You super chatted me twice, B. Tim. I don't know if it's just glitched here or if you did it twice. Feel free to do delete the second one or take it back. I don't know if you can do that. Let me know. And if it doesn't, I'll cash app you the $10 back. I, I would hate for you to get charged twice because it's, it's showing up as the same uh, super chat. I don't know if YouTube is glitching again, but, you know, Grain, good point. Oh, okay. What's up, Nanya? Let me see what Grain said. I fully believe she literally stayed home and didn't do tragedy pimping in person so that her numbers would fall. And now that she felt a lawsuit, she's wanting her numbers to go back as proof. Oh, that is a very good point. That is a really good point. She has manipulated and planned this well before she filed even to the fearing of her life and posting her pew pew to her staying home. And now the suit's filed and she's back on the road. Uh, that is, that is really good points. I actually tend to agree. 
You just did it once. It's just a glitch. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> glad to hear that. What's up, makeup officer? She also threatened to sue Savage in the same way. Yes, she did. There's so many people that she has threatened to sue. I, I'm is it's easier just to pick people out that she hasn't sued because she has threatened so many people. Um, the uh, let's see, BHB goes on to say. Your information is very much incorrect. There have been two lawsuits, both of which I prevailed on, which we know is not true. And she admitted in a previous motion that she did not prevail, that one was dismissed and the other one, I believe she voluntarily dismissed it. So that's not prevailing. Okay. Okay, Benny. I don't take the act of suing someone lightly. I've repeatedly told her to stop. She continues to lie about me. Even your demand letter is defaming and untrue. So now you're accusing the lawyer of defaming you because he sends you a email wanting to communicate with you. Okay, Karen, have her give you all the lawsuits I filed. So, um, newsflash by saying that sentence, Lauren Betty, you, not that he needed permission, but now, um, this is more sacking more on the lawyer side where now he's going to use all these past lawsuits against you. Congratulations, moron. Nope, I will not drop the lawsuit. Have a nice day. Respectfully yours, BHB. Okay, so exhibit two that he talked about. So this is some of the ones that I had not seen previously because it's the first, maybe they're in other ones, but I don't remember seeing some of these other emails. Okay, so this is from the lawyer to BHB. He says, and this was August 15th, when she filed all of those like eight motions, okay? BHB, it says, uh, BHB, as you seek to hold up the regular advancement of a case through communications to your demands, that you be allowed to pro proceed te telephonically, we will stand by our prior di directive to not communicate outside filings. So he's letting her know, hey, I got notifications of these eight frivolous filings that you did in the middle of the night on August 15th, okay, and then, or August 16th or whatever, and then he said, um, well, since you're going to do this and you still don't want to communicate with me until we're in front of a judge, I'm going to proceed accordingly. Uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, grain, burnt toast, in my opinion, I don't think she would ever take the ego or financial knock of numbers lowering to prove a point. But she may be watching and will now say that's why. Ah, yeah, I can see that too. Totally see that. She's going to claim for her financial hardship that she works off of donations to travel to places. Therefore, that makes that okay. But not traveling to Illinois for her lawsuit won't pump, won't pimp that or will. I think you uh, were going to finish that. But yeah. Yeah, I definitely see both sides of that. That's very interesting. But yes, I've noticed that when people say things on live streams, she then repeats that as a reason, which is why I was very careful not to talk about the protective order until the lawyer talked about it publicly. Because <laughs> I mean, even me as just a nobody lay person, I could tell she fucked up when she did that. So... BHB, you are done waiting on them. Families, you have hurt and when they find the strength to fight back, are all here to see it. That's what I hope happens as well. Just like with Ryan Upcuck or whatever, I'm glad that families are starting to sue some of these tragedy pimps. I, I really am because I'm just like, I've always wondered like, when are these families going to be like, you know what, enough is enough. Uh, B10, member for four months. Thank you so much. Are there no missing people in Illinois? Ooh, great question, B10. As much as she shits on that state about crime rates there, you would think that she could do her, quote, work there. <laughs> yeah, just saying. Um, Agree about being careful. Don't help her. Oh, yeah, ex I completely agree with you, M. Amanda. I am careful not to talk about anything that the lawyer isn't posting. Like if there's something that I pick up on, I'm like, hmm, I wonder this or I wonder that. I don't even say it out loud until the lawyer puts it in writing where now everybody knows about it because I don't want to say something that could potentially help her. I don't want to fuck this up. 
Peggy, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's, you are, wow, okay, thank you so much. Thank you for explaining everything. Thank you for being here. You do not have to do that. Thank you. Up cuck, yeah, that's, I'm calling him that. Fuck him. Uh, Jess23, welcome to the dumpster fire. Uh, welcome, thank you. Oh no, I read, I knew exactly what you were saying, Peggy. Yummy Jackie, what's up? I sadly got a jet, got to uh, check the cupboard to see what I need for the slow cooker. Ooh, yummy. Orange chicken and pray that the pumpkin spice season is upon us. When I go grocery shopping, love you peeps. Oh, yummy. I love you in spite of the fact that you like pumpkin spice. <laughs> if that's not love, I don't know what is. <laughs> so BHB then responded to the lawyer. And again, I, these are new emails that I have not seen before. BHB says, Mr. Lawyer, to reiterate, if your office wishes, wishes to stipulate on those two items, I will be open to such discussion. So more, in my opinion, extorting and hostage um, behavior. She's basically saying, I am not talking to you. I'm not going to be open to discussions unless you guys cave on my demands. Hmm. That is not going to look well for the judge. Just for that, I'm going to eat you, your Pop-Tart children. Love you too. Oh, how dare you. I pray this sends the hard message to those who not only harass the families, but for their interference with law enforcement trying to do their jobs. Completely agree. I 100% hope that that's what happens. I thought I was the only person that doesn't like pumpkin spice. Girl, you know what? I don't mind like some of the candles or whatever, but I am not, I am not, yeah, I'm not basic. I, I just, I can't, I can't go to Starbucks and be like, I want a pumpkin spice everything. <laughs> no shade on those in my audience that love pumpkin spice, but it's just not, I'm not like, you know, a fa I'm not fangirling over it. Thank you, twins. Get to 10 memberships. Thank you so much. Welcome Heather, Grain, Stifler's mom, Dragonfly, Cambry. Mrs. Missouri Country Girl, Al Capone, Number Mole, aka Liz, uh, the Canuckin, and Leave It to Bieber. Welcome to the, the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. And also Jet Setter. Welcome. I seriously hope that the September hearing doesn't get pushed back. It's sure it's sure to be epic. I I hope so too. And I also hope, really, really hope that not only does it not get pushed back, but that the judge says, you know what? You can't file a protective order that requires an in-person cross-examination and then also say, I demand to do Zoom. Because there's no reason why she can't go there. If she can go from Florida to Idaho or Florida to New York, there's no reason why she can't go from Florida to Illinois. And I'm hoping that the judge will see it that way, but we will see. If you like pumpkin spice, you probably put pineapple on your pizza. Mmm, spot. No. Shots fired in the chat. <laughs> and then, um, let's see, uh, the lawyer responds to her saying, either cave or I won't have open discussions with you. The lawyer says, quote, received your bar on communication complicates how to proceed, but we will proceed as best as we can without further communications. Very professional answer. Okay. So BHB um, responds. She responds at 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, Betty. Dear Mr. Lawyer, please find attached the following documents for the above referenced matter. And the subject was multiple pleadings are listed below. Oh, and so, okay. So, yeah. So this was her original email that she sent. She sent the lawyer an email at 3 o'clock in the morning. And she says that he's harassing her. Girl, stop. So I guess... She thought that he wasn't going to see the motions ding on his phone, let him know that things in the docket were added. Like, I, wow, I guess she doesn't understand how this works. And after she says, please stop communicating with me, she sends him yet another email and basically says, hey, I'm, I posted these, you know, eight frivolous motions. I listed them here. And if you have, if you... Please let me know if you have any questions. Betty, you told him twice now not to communicate with you. 
So then she says, if your office, and then again, more extortion, if your office would like to stipulate to dismiss this action um, against Heels as co-defendant and the notice for telephonic hearings, let me know. Wow, the balls that you have. And then she says this, I apologize, but I am new to the Odyssey system and I didn't realize until this morning that the motion to voluntary dismiss was in their system, but I inadvertently didn't submit it and has been in draft status this entire time. <laughs> it was successfully uploaded this morning. <laughs> Betty, I thought you were like an expert of this and that I was stupid and I didn't know what I was talking about. And you're smarter than me and you know how to do this better than everybody. And you're going to show the haters. This is going to be the year of lawsuits against the haters. And you're like, yeah, I've, I've had it in draft status for two months. Okay. All right. I just think about her and get immediate free entertainment. <laughs> yes. Oh, you love pineapple on pizza? Mm, okay. Okay, candy. All right. No, I'm just playing. There's it's a it's a heated debate in my chat and it's been going on for a long time about whether or not pineapple should be on pizza and I'm saying no, no, no. It should not. I'm a pineapple. I see I love pineapple, but you put that shit on a pizza and you should go to jail. That is my opinion. Th thank you. Pineapple on pizza is an insult to Italians. I'm not Italian, but you know, I concur. <laughs> It is so funny. Betty lives rent free in all your heads. Oh, she does. Well, no, I live in her penthouse. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, I think that's so funny. A uh, notice how you're not getting banned. I just want to put that out. Not getting banned or timed out because we're not bitches over here. Pineapple and green olives. What the fuck, Sharon? Sharon, what? I'm just playing. That's, I mean, do you, I guess. But why? Pickles on pork chops. Okay, that is going way too far. Barbecue, a pizza with chicken. Okay, now that sounds good, Green. Oh, with pineapple. Ooh, get out. You're banned for life. It has to be the right kind of Canadian bacon and pineapple. Oh, my God. What have I done to have a chat that likes pineapple on their pizza? <laughs> I live in the motherfucking penthouse in her head, okay? Which is why she's going around telling people that she's going to sue me and she's willing to sell her house to sue me. Yeah, I've, I've never said that publicly or privately, but go on, sis, go on. So I like the extra cheese. Feta cheese on watermelon? What the fuck? Oh, my God. You guys are scaring me right now. It must be a solar flare or aliens. <laughs> oh, that sounds so gross. I don't know. I can't do that. Mm -mm. I like cheese and I like watermelon, but why? <laughs> why? Put it together. Why? Peanut butter on potato chips? Oh, come on. Oh, what? Okay. You know what? <laughs> Y'all are scaring me. Peanut butter on eggs. Okay, now y'all are fucking with me. <laughs> there ain't no way y'all eating fucking peanut butter on eggs. I'll stop it. Imagine trying to do a piece of bread. <laughs> oh, my God. You're not joking. Ugh. I cannot. I cannot. Phoenix, <laughs> thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. Someone the other day in a chat said balsamic on ice. Oh, That's crossing so many lines. No, I, I, balsamic vinaigrette on ice cream. Are all y'all fucking pregnant? Is that what we got going on right now? All y'all having like triplets in here? Sprinkle a little salt and pepper on slices of fresh pear. I have not heard of that. I'm willing to try that. I'll, I'll try that, but I love pears. I don't like putting things on them. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you could pull a shanty for Christ and do a peanut butter and jelly on a tortilla. <laughs> because that's what you do <laughs> when you don't have a job. Yes. 
So I think that's all. Oh, no, we got more. Exhibit three. Um, this is just the lawyer saying I'm an attorney over the and otherwise competent to make this affidavit on August 16th. I watched a video on YouTube platform resolved by visiting the URL. The video was titled saying hi. Oh, Betty, the one that people have been reviewing is now used against you in court. Oh, I love it. The video entitled Saying Hi was posted on Bullhorn Betty YouTube channel and featured a woman we recognize as Bullhorn Betty based on her resemblance to media coverage of Bullhorn Betty. <laughs> the shade just doesn't end. I fucking love this. During her video, BHB stated that being out in the field was her, quote, working. I love that he put the comma in the right place. Learn from him, BHB learn from him. And I love how he put it in quotations, stating about a shirt she was wearing, this is going to be pretty much my uniform out in the field whenever I am out working. BHB went on to say she has been dealing with a lot of deadlines, quote unquote, presumably about the case which I represent Queen B. BHB goes on to state, he quoted your video. Oh my God. Not preggers. I'm a grandma. Well, you know what? You get a pass then. You get a pass, eat whatever you want. <laughs> we will respectfully disagree. BHB goes on to state, <laughs> then um, we'll be out in the field. We've got several trips already planned. We're going to, we're going to Idaho by the end of the month. We're going to try to get over and do some coverage. I'm not sure if we're going to do it in South Carolina or New York for Rex Kierman. Plus, we're going to be uh, leaving next week. I'm not going to tell you where we're going next week, but we're going to go out and going and try to bring awareness to a case, end quote. Seven, if I called to testify to the foregoing, I would completely and truthfully do so. Oh, the lawyer's like, I'm calling their bluff, bitch. And then he signs it. Oof. Wow, I love I love how we're watching this in real time. Like we just reviewed that. If I didn't, I know like a lot of other people did, reviewed that stream. And I remember making the point, as so many other people did, that it was going to probably be used against her in court because she's claiming that she is demanding Zoom calls because she can't travel out of state due to financial hardships. And then here she is traveling further than Illinois and to multiple states in like a very short amount of period. And so I, I think that it's fantastic that here we just reviewed that and here he's using it against her, which means, Betty, he's doing the good lawyer lawyer thing and keeping an eye on your channel. <laughs> oh God, I love this. This is fantastic. I get the powdered peanut butter. That's a, th I've never heard of that. An oval teen full of vitamins and no additive. I have never heard of powdered peanut butter. I have never heard of that. Interesting. I'm hoping she's required to show up and it is televised. Mm, we'll see. I have no idea, but I really hope. So that's all. And the, so those two are the two documents that I wanted to review today. What did y'all think about that? That's crazy, huh? I went to see. Hell no, stay out of my state, Betty. <laughs> oh boy, I think a lot of people are saying that. BHB says it has to be on TV. It's our right to watch. Ooh, good point, Amy. I wonder if she'd feel the same way if they start live streaming her case for other people to stream it for money, since that she thought it was appropriate for her to try to mess up the West case and stream that against a judge's order. I wonder if she would still keep that same energy. We'll see. I don't know, and I'm telling this right now, I do not know if the judge or the courts there allow streaming of that. Have no idea. But even if we can't be there, I really, really hope that the judge mix or go in person. That way, the lawyer can cross-examine her and possibly we can get the transcripts because that is way better than live streaming it sometimes, because then you get to really look at what was said back and forth and pick it apart, which I know that she is not wanting to do. So yikes. 
I will definitely be reviewing the rest of the documents on Monday. Um, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure that it would things would get boring and drop off because she would just do the bill of particulars and it would just go on and be super boring. And we wouldn't really get updates until like September or December when we have the, the hearings. But with all of this, it's so much content for so many people. I love it. And it's like the more bullshit she does, the worse her case is against her. And the better it is for all of these people to review her, which is what she doesn't want to happen. So I just, I love it all the way around. Is crimes and fashion going? I have no idea. No idea. But she does some really good streams on her channel too. So I definitely um, want to give her a shout out. If my one of my mods can put the link to her channel in my chat. She also reviews Bullhorn Betty and um, she's so funny. Oh, you're welcome, Jess. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, thank you so much. Once upon a time in true crime channel. <laughs> right. It does kind of feel like a, a soap opera, huh? You need to go over the one where the lawyer compares JLR versus Uni and BHB versus Q Queen B. Absolutely. I'm going over all of it. And again, I was planning on going over the original lawsuit that she filed because not only is it hilarious, but the lawyer is correct. It was in complete disarray. It was a mess, but I don't want to help her. And I hope you guys understand that is that until they work out whether or not she has to do a bill of particulars. And if she does, she writes it and submits it. So until that happens, I don't want to go over her original lawsuit and give her any pointers or helpful tips on how she can improve it. So that's why that's on hold. And we're going to continue to do the ones in order as they're coming in on the docket. But yes, Monday, we are definitely going over the one where he compares JLR and Uni's case to BHB and Queen B's case. It is not only fascinating, but it is very damning because it's yet another lie that she gets caught in. And I have to say, even if, so again, I don't know whether JLR actually helped her write the original lawsuit or not. Okay. But let's just say that Queen, that um, Bullhorn Betty saw the lawsuit and just copied it without JLR knowing. Either way, it has now could potentially cause issues for JLR because JLR is still on promotion, um, probation, sorry. And he has gotten in trouble with this in the past. So for her to not only name him in her legal documents, demanding that Queen Bee sue him, and then also copy, whether it's his knowledge or not, for her to, somebody copied it and she submitted it as if she wrote it. That's fucked up. And as much as I don't like JLR and I don't like MGL or Dolly, for her to name them in these legal documents is super fucked up. <laughs> it's, it's not what a friend does. And I don't think that, I think that Betty... I think I was giving her too much credit. I thought that she truly did understand enough to not do something like this, but I was wrong. I was completely wrong and I should not have given her that credit. She clearly doesn't understand how naming people in legal court documents can affect them legally in their real life. And I, I just think that if one of my friends ever did that, I would immediately go to them and be like, dude, what the fuck? And unless they had some real good answer, um, that's the end of the friendship. Because now you are dragging me into your bullshit, potentially could harm my job, my husband's job, me legally cause me... Um, uh, financial problems by having to get a lawyer and pay for this just to defend myself or get deposed or whatever, because they decided to put me in a lawsuit. So that's the position that she has put these people in. So whether or not they remain friends with her, that's their business. Don't give a, I don't care. That's on them, but it just goes to show you 
that all these people that were saying that Bullhorn Betty will always turn on people, they were 100% right. She turns on her mods. She turns on her supporters. And now this is definitely a fuck you to all of her friends. The only people that have actually been like, I don't know, sticking up for her publicly. So if if they stick by her after this, it just it's very telling about them, in my opinion. I daydream if I had a daughter, she would be smart. Oh my gosh, Crystal. You're thank you so much. I appreciate that. Who needs enemies, right? When you have a friend like her. Exactly. Anyway, guys, I will let you go. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I need some coffee. Okay. And I need to get on with other stuff I got to get done today. But I will definitely, definitely be reviewing that on Monday. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Thank you for being here. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. What's up, Jules? Remember for 23 months, Betty clearly peaked in high school. Oh, oh, Jules. I don't, I don't think she peaked there either. I don't think so. But yes, you're probably right. <laughs> Thank you, Jules. AKA burnt toast too. <laughs> Later, guys, and have a great night. See ya. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. What's up, homies? It's crazy looks right here, homie. No. Much love to the fans. It don't stop. Won't stop. With the thighs. With the thighs. Won't stop. With the thighs. Christian. Won't stop. With the thighs. Christian. Won't stop. With the thighs. Christian. I'll beat your mother. Ass if I wanted to Don't stop, won't stop Real stuff Don't stop, won't stop Real stuff Don't stop, won't stop Real stuff Perfect Lover's cast, yeah Yeah, suck Won't stop With the thangs Christian Won't stop With the thangs Christian Won't stop With the thangs Christian With the no Lost Keep on pushing Fucking ass if I wanted to. Y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know. Damn! Damn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>